from the Oklahoma Department of Wildlife Conservation, Outdoor Oklahoma. Well, hello and welcome to Outdoor Oklahoma. I'm Todd Craighead. Now, 2009 was a historical year for us in Oklahoma because it marked the very first black bear hunting season in our state. The season was only offered in a four county region in southeast Oklahoma, Latimer, Pushmataha, LaFleur, and McCurtain counties. Another interesting aspect was that there was a harvest quota set at only 20 bears, which meant that hunters had to call in every day to make sure the season was even still open. Today, we'll take a look at the chain of events that helped to set up this very first historical season in our state. We'll also discover the unique and challenging aspects of taking a black bear in the Sooner State. I started working with bears in 91. Uh, up until that point, uh, we had just virtually messed with nuisance bears, uh, an occasional nuisance bear here or there. And uh, the population as of about that time started to kind of increase. And we got more and more nuisance calls and uh, together with OSU uh, in the mid 90s, we started a bear research project that uh, helped us get a good estimation on how many bears we had in the southeast and uh, which is what the end result was of a, a very successful bear season last year. They've moved from in from Arkansas and uh, Arkansas has had times where uh, they didn't harvest a lot of bears on their bear seasons and you know it uh, they just kept moving west. Those Washita ranges, uh, east and west running ridges, they just kept coming our direction and uh, we, we have a very good population of bears. And as far as our southeast bear population now, uh, our population is probably very well based on, on uh, uh, our bears having cubs every year. So we don't, uh, we still probably get some, some bears coming over, but uh, our population is big enough now that we're just repopulating our own, so. Bears are a, are a lot different and they're hunted a lot different than, than the deer. Uh, we had a whole lot of people call us wanting to come down and, and hunt a bear. And we tried to, to tell them that hunting a bear wasn't like just coming down deer hunting. Just, uh, you know, you can't drive down here, hop out of the vehicle and jump off the uh, Telemina Drive and go down and hunt a bear. You're going to have to spend a lot more time scouting and finding a place uh, you know, where the bears are, are feeding, and uh, uh, it's, it's not near as easy as, as the deer hunting part of it. You know, the first thing you're gonna really wanna do is, even if you're in good areas, is you wanna make sure that there's bears around, and, and you wanna look for bear sign. You know, bear, just like deer, they uh, are slaves to their stomachs, and so they're always finding things to eat out in the woods, and we've got some pokeberry here, you can see. From this plant, these are what the uh, the berries are, and and here we're around September 1st, and these are actually past ripe a little bit, but you can see from where we're at that there's been a bear in here, and what it, what this bear has done is this bear has come into this patch, and there's several places that you can see what it's happened. These come in here, and these these limbs are up here and they've got these berries on them. Now you can see from right here, he's completely cleaned off all the berries right off of that. And what has happened is he reached up here and snapped that limb and that limb was folded over. Just like these plants here, he's just actually pulled them over and then just raked, raked these right off into his mouth. And so that's a pretty common, uh, that's a pretty common bear sign they'll transition off of these. And uh, when, the, when the acorns start falling, they're gonna be on those uh, nuts. Those are uh, real good bear food, just like they are for deer. And uh, they'll also feed on larvae, grubs, uh, wasp, uh, larvae is real good. Anything, really anything high in protein, these bears are trying to bulk up for winter and so they're eating anything and everything that they can possibly get their mouths on. And uh, we'll also see if we can't find some other sign. Uh, 
possibly logs or, or other things that we could be looking for. Bears are like a lot of wildlife. They're most active at dawn and dusk and, and during the night. So getting out and driving the roads, you're probably not gonna see one. But again, you're, you're gonna wanna look for subtle signs that a bear has been in the area. And here you can see are a couple logs. They're old, they've started to rot and decay. Okay, but basically they're intact. Now, we look just right here a few feet away, and obviously you can see that this one is not intact. And it didn't just deteriorate like this. What you can see is something's been down here, and what the bear will do is he'll, he'll pull this log apart like that, and there'll be grubs and different bugs, termites or whatever, down in here and and the bear will just actually eat that stuff just go through their centipedes there's different things in here and they just dig this out like this and as you can see they've been working on this log right here and probably in a year or two when the bugs get right on those logs they'll probably go to town on them too Well, once you really start looking in the bear woods and looking for bear sign, this is a not so subtle sign right here. You can see where this log has lain right here for some time. And a bear came up to this log and just rolled it, rolled the log and then had him a buffet right here where this log was laying. And this is a pretty, this is a pretty good sized log. So, you know, bears are very, very strong. Uh, somebody once told me it's a 250 pound bear is like a 250 pound raccoon. They can rip things open, they can push things. You know, this tells us we're in bear country. We just wanna know, yes, there are bears around here. You know, the four county area is a pretty big area and there's not bears behind every tree. You know, they're, st and they're still kind of a, a secretive and a shy animal. Don't necessarily like being in real close proximity to people and so we're just we're right now we're just looking to make sure we're in the right neighborhood so to speak There's some things that you need to be aware of in a law enforcement standpoint while you're bear hunting. Uh, one of which is there is no pursuit with hounds, meaning you can't use a dog for any reason to pursue or attempt to take a black bear in Oklahoma. Another thing that you need to uh, be aware of is there is a baiting law on all public land, whether it be Three Rivers, Honeybee Creek, or U.S. Forest Service or the Washita WMA. Private property is open to uh, baiting in Oklahoma and you can put as many groceries as you like out to try to attempt to uh, attract a bear. Some of the phone calls that we fielded last year before the hunt uh, was you know where can I hunt uh, I'm coming down you know the day before the hunt starts uh, can you give me some direction well it takes a lot more preparation again like we've talked before about to, to come to to the southeast bear hunt. We have a lot of public ground uh, there's a lot of, of, of public hunting area in those four counties, um, but to just jump down here and, and think you're going to uh, harvest a bear is not realistic. So uh, we did field a lot of calls like that, that uh, and, and some of them still came on down and hunted three or four days and, and had a good time, but uh, uh, it, it takes a lot of effort and a lot of uh, pre-hunt preparation to get ready to hunt a bear. Now you can't bait on public land, but you can bait on private. So that was another issue of uh, folks coming in, they had to get permission on some of this private land to, to establish any kind of baiting areas. So uh, it's, a, it's a more difficult hunt and a lot more preparation to get it done. So you know, we, we harvested 10 bears out of the floor, four out of McCartan, three out of Push and two out of Latimer. And we really expected uh, more bears to have been harvested out of Latimer County. We have a, have had many nuisance problems in Latimer County in the San Boys Mountains area. So, but we just didn't, either we didn't have the hunters up there um, 
hunting in that area or, or what the reason was, but we just didn't get many harvested out of that area. Well, this is what we're looking for right here. We've got a whole bunch of different tracks on this one sandy spot. We've got a coyote here. There's a deer track here, and this deer tracks actually come over here, but you can kind of see there's a indentation of a pad here, and uh, that track is about the size of a closed fist. And uh, like I said, it's kind of marred up by some other tracks and such, but you know, that's uh, definitely not a coyote. Of course, we're, uh, we're here on private land, and you can bear hunt on both public or private land, but you can sure increase your odds on private land if you uh, employ a bait strategy. And uh, baiting is something that we're gonna be setting up a bait station here today. And we've got a number of different tools. We're gonna actually set up several uh, bait stations per se. The first of which is just your real common 55 gallon barrel. Uh, got a hole here in the side. We're gonna fill this barrel up with uh, feed stuffs. And we're gonna chain it to a tree. And basically the bear can, can reach in here, roll this around to get some of it out, but they can't get it all at once. And this is a really good uh, technique early when you're gonna get started baiting and you're not gonna be able to be there every day to check your baits or refresh your baits. You know, you can put enough bait in here for two, three, four days or even up to a week. Now, once we get ready to actually start hunting, we're gonna be doing uh, a crib bait, which is uh, what we've got going on right here. And we've actually got some friends that are helping gather up some, some logs. And, and what you're gonna do here is I plan on hunting just right here behind a tree stand. And so I'm gonna crib this and I'm gonna crib this with some logs to make a V. This will be the point of the V. And we're gonna come out here with logs and then we're also gonna come off the top making like a manger or a crib type bait right here. The bait will be inside under some logs and what will happen is if this bear comes up, this bear will be coming right at me. But to get to the bait, the bear will have to turn its body around the V or around the crib. And it, will, it should always present a good quartering away shot, which is really important when you're bow hunting for bears, like uh, when our season starts on October 1st, because uh, bears are a tough animal and you want to make an ethical shot. Uh, so you want a quartering away shot, if at all possible, or broadside shot, but especially a quartering away shot. And when you set up your baits cribbed like this for archery, you can almost guarantee yourself that you'll be able to get that quartering away shot. So what we're gonna do now, and I mentioned this is an actual hunting crib. We're also gonna put out a barrel because we can't be here often enough to, to replenish our crib. Right before the season starts, we'll wanna to try to crib this bait every day or every other day. But for now, we're gonna use a barrel for volume of feed so that the bear keeps coming back and if he comes back two days or three days later, there's still feed in here. But we're gonna set this up like we're gonna be hunting and uh, can use, people use all kinds of things for bait. Pretty much anything you can possibly conceive that's edible or semi-edible has been used for bait. I have planted over oats before, and oats are a real good uh, feed stuff. It's good for the bears. Um, it's also a lot of volume, and we'll put this in there and we'll put other things in with it. Cause I am a big believer in diversity. You had lots of different kinds of baits and chances are the bear is going to like one of them really well. So we're going to start with some oats. We'll start with some oats and I've got uh, also got some baby beef feed as you can see. So we've got uh, Twinkies and Ho-Ho's and stuff like that. I'm going to get in here and Kind of mix this stuff up a little bit because I don't want to get stuff in there. 
one thing we keep in mind is this we're going to when we get this done which is about to be done we're going to put these big logs back on top and that's going to keep most of your smaller animals raccoons and such out when that bear comes in here he's so strong he's just going to flip those off like they're toothpicks and that's kind of how we judge what kind of an animal has been in here feeding number one is this big log right here yeah maybe a raccoon could a giant raccoon could roll it or something but if that log's over here 10 feet there's no doubt it was a bear and he just went whoop the last thing we have to do here is put a little liquid molasses on and then we're going to put our logs back on top and everybody kept telling me we're going to harvest those 20 bears the first weekend there's no way that uh, uh, that we'll get through the first weekend they'll all be gone uh, but just about a week 10 days uh, before season opened, uh, acorns started to fall. And those bears come off those feeders and different baits that were out there and went straight to the acorns and never did come back. So that's why the hunters struggled to get, uh, to get the 19 and they never did get that 20th bear. Uh, we had a great acorn crop and the bears were on those acorns and uh, uh, they didn't come back to their bait. If you harvest a bear here in Oklahoma and are lucky enough to uh, take one, there are some things you need to know. You need to be able to contact the check station number, which is listed in our hunting and fishing regs underneath the bear season dates and times in our regulations. Once you contact that number, a biologist will in turn come to you to be able to take some valuable information or ask you to come to one of our uh, check stations here in the southeast. The 20 bear quota has not been filled uh, whenever we hit muzzle loading, then your bear tag is good through that muzzle loading season, which means that you're able with the primitive firearm to try to uh, attempt to harvest a black bear here in Oklahoma. Four bears that were harvested, or three, during muzzle loading season were more incidental contacts than, than anything that was baited. They were out deer hunting, had a bear tag and the bears happened to come by so they got to harvest the bears. So that's one thing that, uh, that we can encourage is uh, make sure they're still, uh, that the quota hasn't been met before muzzleloader season gets here and, uh, and come down and hunt with the hunt deer and have a bear tag with you at the same time. That way you have a, an opportunity if a bear comes by to, to harvest a bear. You know, spare hunting's not for everybody. I mean, it is a lot of work, or it can be. But the opportunity to see a bear in the wild at 10 yards, to have them that close and you can hear every breath they take. Sometimes I mean, they're so close you can smell them. It's just, you know, you don't get, most people don't ever get to experience that. And to think we have a chance to do that here in Oklahoma and, and possibly harvest a bear, that's just really awesome. But especially in our, in our line of work, the things that all biologists and, and, and supervisors, what have you, talk about is, uh, is to leave it as well as you found it, you know, to make sure things are as good as they were when you started. Uh, we have more land, we definitely have more turkeys, uh, we have more deer, obviously, uh, and now then we have bears. I mean, I don't think there's anything more special than to say that you have bears in Oklahoma. Uh, I, I just think it's just, it's just a great opportunity to be able to say that you hunted a bear or harvested a bear in Oklahoma. I mean, we're the only the 29th state that's ever even had a bear season. And to think uh, that, that, you, that you have bears, much less that you have an opportunity to hunt bears in Oklahoma, I think that's just real special. So if you're going to plan on taking a black bear in Oklahoma, just keep in mind that baiting is only allowed on private property. For all of us at your wildlife department, I'm Todd Craighead. Thanks for bearing with us today. <laughs> we'll see you somewhere new next time on Outdoor Oklahoma.